Hi, I'm Gordon Burkell from Filmmaker U. At Filmmaker U, we create courses for film professionals to deepen and diversify your existing skill set. You can learn more at filmmakeru.com or, of course, follow us on Instagram at filmmaker underscore U. Every week, we interview a film professional to discuss their work. And this week, I'm joined by editor Carol Kravitz Ikenyan, um, whose work includes Ballers, Intergalactic, and more recently, The Morning Show, just to name a few. Welcome to the show, Carol. Thank you. Um, I guess my first uh, question for you about this this show is I was researching other interviews that you've done and um, you had said in one interview that finding the tone for the morning show was really difficult uh, initially. So what was it that made it difficult to find the tone? Correct. Um, it's a show that is along the line of drama and comedy. And when you have shows like that, where you have to honor the comedy, but at the same time, stick um, honest to the characters and the story that are pretty dramatic, um, it's, a, it's a very fine line to find. Um, so the actors give you so much range of, of comedy, of great humor that they find in the middle, but all that has to be very thoughtfully chosen because if you go towards comedy too much mm -hmm. then you miss the the drama and the reality of a moment at the same time in our world even in the most dramatic moments there is humor that's mm -hmm. how life is and humor can be also very tragic um so it's that fine line to find and this show is particularly difficult um to find it, it's always a, a real challenge. Are we going too much towards comedy or are we not honoring it enough? Um, mm -hmm. And it, it also, it, it finding the right tone musically is also, you know, it, it goes down the line to everything, how it's shot, what angles we use, um, what music we play. Um, so that tone, that tone is always a bit of a challenge. Which is interesting, like I, because I think when I first saw the trailers for the morning show, it has a lot of iconic comedic people and people who have great comedic timing. So, do you almost have to pull back the comedy when you're you're cutting? Do you find? Yes, you have to be careful. It, it's not it's not consistently pulling back. Mm -hmm. It's actually finding the right comedic moment, because sometimes they are too big. Um, but, you know, because there is humor and cynicism sort of mixed together in the show and you want to honor the comedy because it's, mm -hmm. it's a great pleasure to see them. They are just amazing actors, but you just got to be careful how far you go with it, um, how big it is, how mm -hmm. often, you know, and so in the same way that their, their work as actors have uh, this incredible range of comedy, we as editors, we have to find also the right timing for the comedy mm -hmm. to pop and not confuse or take away from the main story. But you're right, the, the cast is amazing. And there are really, I mean, <laughs> They are really amazing, amazing moments to choose from. Yeah. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's uh it takes a while. We always find it. Yeah. Or we feel like we do, but it's it always takes a while. So with such an amazing cast, like how do you uh, assess the rushes then? Like how do you because you get this basically smorgasbord of amazing <laughs> deliveries, I'm sure. Like what are the rushes like when they come in? How do you determine which one to use? My motto really for this show is honesty and grounding the performances. So um, they, I, I have to be as honest as possible within the situation. Mm -hmm. um, so, so as not to exaggerate the comedy uh, and the other direction also is, mm -hmm. is dangerous to, to dramatic, you know? So um, I just, it, it's, it's trial and error a lot 
you know, you try mm. a lot of things and you see, you can feel it. That, that's where our job is, is to be able to be objective as long mm. as, as possible with the whole team behind us, the director and the showrunner, and to assess how far we go in the comedy and how far we go in the drama. What are the moments that we really want to achieve? And mm -hmm. we pick from the performance because they give you so much. They gave us so much. You know, when you think of Billy Kudrup character, Corey, mm -hmm. for example, um, who is given so much dialogue and he just gives it so much life and he has such varied performances. Um, I remember there is a scene where he is confronted in the last episode of the morning show of this season three, mm -hmm. he's confronted by a Paul and he's lost the battle and he's got like incredible, like incredible dialogue. And a lot of it takes, he gave a lot of humor to it, but really he has lost. And so we went with a take where he was actually very serious in the beginning until he recovered and was able to like get up and sort of um, move on from the loss with great dignity and humor and back to his character. But we had to make him very unbalanced for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, 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 it's really minutia and you really study and you try different versions, but with a cast like that, it's extraordinary. My friends and I would make little videos um, in our backyards, you know, imitations of Indiana Jones and Star Wars. You know, eventually that need to tell stories became more of a technical interest and an interest in the, the art. To me, what's exciting is using cinema in its full potential, which is rhythm and sound design and music. Our job is to set up expectations and then deliver on them. I'm Brian Cates, and this is my course in film editing. Well, what's what's interesting, the, like the other thing I was going to ask you is, you basically this season jumps two years in the future. It's um, so, how do you how did you balance sort of? keeping the audience oriented and keeping them moving forward, but still paying homage to past yeah. uh, the past year and keeping people aware of what's happened. Yeah, that, that was definitely a challenge um, because we needed to reorient the audience. We brought new themes and some new mystery. But when you bring a new mystery, you one of the challenges was not to let the audience think that it's something that they they were aware of from season two. Mm -hmm. For example, um, when Corey um, convinces Bradley at the airport when she comes, you know, to go in, to go into the rocket instead of um, instead of Alex Levy. Mm -hmm. There is a sense that there is a mystery because he tells her, you owe me something. Mm -hmm. And it's episode one of season three, two years later. So as an audience, I think automatically you think this is something I know that happened in season two, but actually it is not. It is something that has happened in between. Mm -hmm. So as editors and storytellers in the cutting room, we're confronted to the question, is it going to be confusing for the audience? Are they going to try to work um, trying to figure out and doing the metal work instead of being in the moment mm -hmm. uh, with the scene uh, and trying to figure out what is it? I'm not sure what it is that they are referring to. So we decided to use some quick flashbacks mm -hmm. to kind of to create a moment that told the audience that it is something else. It's not about their past romance. It's not about something from season two. It's something else, something new that is still a mystery and that will unfold as the season goes. Um, so yes, it is very much uh, challenging. So were the flashbacks sort of something that was created in the edit editing suites or was that something yeah. that was in the script? No, no, it wasn't in the script. 
This okay. is something that we came up with. It's it's those things are very hard to tell in the script form. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it it's hard to see all the issues. You you kind of see that once you put it together and you go, wait a second, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're talking about something that mm, are we gonna think it refers to season two? And and we realize that's probably what's gonna happen. They're gonna probably go, what was it? And they won't be able to recall it because obviously it wasn't. And it's kind of confusing and we don't want to confuse. We mm -hmm. want to be clear. Um, so that's something we went and got some shots from the insurrections, you know, from uh, later down the line in another episode. And we just quickly inserted them. And it, okay. it made the moment very clear. There was no yeah. question. It really wasn't about something from season two. It was some new mystery. So these yeah. are the discoveries you make in the cutting room when you start putting material together how you know. how flexible is like how much i guess changes from the script to your edit and like how flexible is the footage like are you locked in at some points or is it you know you can move things around as much as you want yes we're never locked we're never locked into anything if we can find if there are issues that have to be solved Mm -hmm. Or if we can make it better, we can move things around. That's what's beautiful and creative. That's what I love about about the work is it. We're not just transferring the script, you mm -hmm. know, to the with the visuals. We are actually rethinking and continuing the writing with what exists. We take some lines out. We move scenes around. We cheat things. Uh, um, you know, we we really work not just on putting the scene together, mm -hmm. but on really re-examining everything that has been written to see if it plays, if it works, if there's maybe a better way to do it where the tension is greater or the humor is better or the mystery mm -hmm. is better. So it's constantly working, not just on the performances, but on the episode, on the whole season. We even move things from different episodes. You know, oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. which, which is interesting because my my next question was going to be about because you cut the first episode of season three in the the last episode, yes. and so you basically oversaw the arc for this right. the season. Right. So, uh, what were some of the challenges in that, uh, and making sure that you know the the whole sort of bookend is is working for the audience? Yes, all the story has to fall back obviously on I mean obviously num episode one is exactly what you touched upon mm -hmm. earlier is how to transition from season two to season three when you jump two years so that's yeah. episode one and then episode 10 it has to it has to work not from episode one necessarily but from the all the additional episodes that have come after afterwards mm -hmm. and it has to sort of like, flow into the last episode and and all the things that were set up have to be addressed and mm -hmm. resolved and I, I mean resolved or not resolved but given an answer mm -hmm. and uh so yes you just have to keep track uh, as an editor of not just your episode you can't cut it i can't cut episode 10 without really understanding what happens in Two, three, four, five, yeah. six, seven, eight, nine. Um, otherwise, I'm <laughs> doing a different show. Um, yeah, because but it has cut, to address. The finale you cut with another person, right? Yes, yes. So, with Amy Tucker. Yes. How did you guys split up the work? Um. Well, that's that was the first time that Plummy and I worked together, and so we sort of because. The, sh the show is very ambitious and episode mm -hmm. one had a rocket, uh, you know, <laughs> so it took us a very long time to really finish episode one. So and then I was also doing episode six that also co-edited with Andrew Gus. And so what happened is that we we're on so many episodes, so many episodes were still open at the same time that we had to collaborate on 10. And so we there was not really a we sort of went the way we improvised a little bit because we were very busy with other episodes so she started um putting it together 
and then I would go on and we would discuss, you know, what we saw together. Then I did a pass and then she did another pass. So we sort of built upon each other um, uh, the show, the episode. Uh, that's pretty much how we did it. But I have to say it was, it was sort of who was available when, mm -hmm. you know, and then we would work ourselves, you know, to, to the finish. Interesting. Yeah. Now I have one last question for you. Mm -hmm. What would you say is your favorite guilty pleasure film or TV show to watch? Oh, um, well, this year I've certainly enjoyed beef. Uh, this, I, I guess it's that very interesting, again, fine line between humor and drama, mm -hmm. right? It's yeah. very dramatic, but it's incredibly funny. And I think that they really mastered that tone perfectly. Mm -hmm perfectly you know wow. um, yeah. and I think that that was quite successful but also I have to say that I'm an academy member now and I vote into I vote for the foreign films mm -hmm. and that's my guilty pleasure right now because I get to watch all of these foreign um, films and it's just amazing it's so yeah. inspiring. You know, I just watched something, uh, a the Tunisian entry last night yeah. uh, for the Academy Awards. And it is so amazing. It's called Four Daughters. Just okay. amazing. Blend of documentary and and sort of fiction together. Very, very mm -hmm. creative, incredibly moving. So I watch a lot of things. <laughs> well, time. thank you so much for letting me interview. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. And that's it for this week, everyone. Make sure to check us out at filmmakeru.com or, of course, on Instagram at filmmaker underscore you. I'm Gordon Burkell. Thanks for watching.